Welcome to our online. So here is our third example of how to solve a circuit using the mesh analysis method. We just have two meshes and we're looking for the two currents I1 and I2. So let's go ahead and use the KVL method. We add up all the voltage rise and drops around each mesh and then we should end up with two equations that we can solve for the two currents. So starting with the left mesh using KVL, let's start in this corner right here. We go across the power supply from here to here. That's in the positive direction. So we add 40 volts with a 30 degree phase angle. Then we go across the inductor, that's a voltage drop, minus J10, and that's times current I1. And then we have a voltage drop across the capacitor, so that's minus a minus J20. Notice I try to keep track of the negative sign. So I use a negative for the voltage drop. I put in parentheses what I'm dropping. So with inductor, you have a positive J10, but with a capacitor, you have a negative J20. Just write it out so you don't get lost with the negative signs. Of course, that would be times I1. But notice we also go against the current for I2, so that's minus I2. And then we come all the way around, that adds up to zero. All right, now we combine all the light currents. So we have an I1 here, we have an I1 there. Minus times a minus gives me a plus J20, and a minus J10, that's a plus J10. So J10 times I1. For I2, we have a minus times a minus times a minus, so that's a minus J20 times I2. And then bringing this over to the right side, that becomes equal to minus 40 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. I don't like this, this to be negative, so I'm going to multiply everything by a negative sign to make that into a positive. So it gives me minus J10 I1 plus J20 I2 equals a positive 40 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. And it's all positive, just easier to work with. So now let's write it as to the real and imaginary part. So we need a calculator for that. And so that becomes minus J10 I1 plus J20 I2 is equal to the real part will be 30, take the cosine times 40 gives me 34.64, 34.64 uh, plus J, uh, the sine of 30 is 1 half times 20, 40 gives me 20. All right, so now we have an equation for mesh 1. Might as well mark it so we keep track of what we're doing. All right, now we're ready to go to mesh 2, starting at this corner right here, going across the capacitor, it's a voltage drop, so minus, a minus J20. Notice again, a voltage drop, but I'm dropping a minus J20, and that would be times I2, but I'm going against the current I1, so minus I1. Then I go across the resistor, so it's a voltage drop, minus 40 times I2. Then I go across the power supply, from positive to negative, so that's a minus 50 with a phase angle of zero degrees, and that adds up to zero. All right, combining like terms. We have an I1 here, just one of them. We have a minus times a minus times a minus, that's three minuses, that's minus J20 times I1. For I2, we have a minus 40, and a minus times a minus J20, that's a plus J20, so that plus a minus 40 plus J20, yes, times I2, always make sure about the sign, so a minus 40 plus J20, and the minus 50 goes across, so it becomes equals to a positive 50 with a phase angle of zero, so just the real part only. And it looks like we're ready, and that's our equation number two. Okay, now we can go ahead and set up into a matrix format to use the method of determinants to solve for the two currents. So let's do that. So here we end up with a minus J10 and a plus J20 for the first two elements. And then here we get a minus J20 and a minus 40 plus J20. Multiply the times the I matrix, I1 and I2, the two currents. And that should equal the two constants on the right side. So here we have 3464 plus J20. 
and here, over here we have a plus 50. Okay, now before we solve that, we may take a look at it and see, I see 10, 20, 20, 40, 20, 50, 20, just this one has a decimal point, but realizing I can really divide both equations by 10 to make the equations a whole lot easier to work with. Smaller numbers help, so let's do that. So this becomes a minus j, minus 1j, this becomes a j2, this becomes a minus j2, and this becomes a minus 4 plus j2. Times i1 and i2, and that gives me on the right side a 3.464 plus j2 and a plus 5. And notice it's the exact same two equations, but both sides of the equation divided by 10 to make the numbers a lot easier to work with. So now what we need to do is find the determinant, find d1 and d2, and then we can solve for i1 and i2. Because I'm starting to run out of room here, so when we get too squeezed, let's go ahead and make that part 2. And in part 2 we'll solve the determinant using the, the, the method of determinants, and that's how we'll find i1 and i2.